you really want to gain knowledge in your meditation, you've got to focus on what's already right here. And it's hard to get more basic than just the body sitting here and the breath coming in and going out. And that awareness of the body sitting here and the awareness of the breath. You find that normally your mind has a lot of other awareness as well. But that tends to focus out on the past, focus out on the future, or things outside in the present. And the further you get away from the right here and the right now, the more uncertain things are. And a lot of us have some very elaborate con constructs about the past, elaborate con constructs about the future, elaborate worldviews about what's going on in the present moment. But when you stop and look at them, you realize how little of those things are really knowledge and how much of it is just guesswork. You have a little fragment here and a little fragment there, and it's like archaeologists coming across a site where only fragments remain, and they just try to put them together and then fill in an awful lot in the middle. And what is that filler if not just ignorance? dressed up as knowledge. And this is the way most of our knowledge is. And we talk about ignorance as being an important thing we want to overcome in the, med in the meditation, but we don't really realize that the ignorance is not obvious not knowing. It's the things we think we know. And yet when you dig down a little bit, you realize that it's all based on guesswork. So the way to get around that is to just settle down what's really right here. Is the breath coming in? You know it's coming in. Is it going out? You know it's going out. Okay, stay with that knowledge. And you may have read a lot of other things about what you're going to learn in the course of the meditation. But put that aside for the time being. Just focus on what's right here, right now. The more you get to know what's here, right here, right now, the more those other things will become plain. This is not to say that book learning is totally useless. It's very useful in giving us pointers as to where to look, what questions to ask. But as for the answers, if there really are going to be answers, they have to come out of our experience right here, right now. And the books are also useful for checking up what we've learned. When we gain these insights into the present moment, exactly what state of mind were you in when you gained those insights? Was it a stable state of mind? Was it a steady state of mind? Was it clear? Was it mindful? Was it alert? There are many states, passages where the Buddha said, if someone actually puts the teaching into practice, develops the right level of alertness, the right level of mindfulness, can clear away greed, anger, and delusion. There's no way that they could not come to the Dharma. This is why when he was teaching his basic, the basic principles of, his, of the Dharma in the terms of the, the wings to awakening, there's very little in terms of views that are expressed there. Mostly it's qualities of mind. The assumption being that if you really do develop these qualities in your mind, you can't help but come to the same conclusion, see the same things the Buddha saw gain the same sort of release that he gained. So it's not a member, matter of memorizing things you picked up from the book. Aside from the pointers that say, look here, ask this question, probe in there, steady the mind here, and then see what happens. So all of it is right here, right now. In fact, when the Buddha talks about the the insights that finally lead to awakening, they're all expressed in terms of this and that. In other words, things are immediately present. Where was the Buddha on the night of his awakening? He was watching his breath. What's the difference between his breath and your breath? Not much difference in terms of the breath. A lot of difference in terms of the qualities of mind that he brought to the breath. The questions that he asked. But those are the things we have to work on. Stay right here and then develop. Mindfulness right here, develop alertness right here, concentration, discernment, all right here. Right here in the heart, right here in the present moment. Because everything we're going to have to learn is right here.
all the things we have to come to understand are right here. The Buddha talked about sankharas, fabrications, as being the essence of insights. When you understand fabrications, he says, okay, that's the knowledge that's going to clear up, clear away all the bonds, the bonds on the mind, all the fetters on the mind. And what are those fabrications? Well, there's the bodily fabrication, which is the breath. Verbal fabrication, that's directed thought and evaluation. And when you focus your thoughts on the breath, you're evaluating the breath. Okay, verbal fabrication is right there. And then mental fabrication is feelings and perceptions. Perceptions of the labels you put on things, feelings of the feelings of pleasure, pain, neither pleasure nor pain that you feel both in body and in mind. Well, those are right here as well. So what else do you need? You've got all the raw materials. It's just the mental qualities that you bring to them are not, not up to speed yet. That's what you've got to work on. But it's all right here. And you may have trouble ferreting out, okay, which is the feeling, which is the directed thought? Well, don't worry about that. Focus on just getting steady, as steady as you can, right here. And the steadier you are right here, the more things will clear up. It's like water that's been stirred up. If you keep stirring it up, it's just going to stay muddy. But if you allow it to sit still for a while, okay, the, the mud particles will settle to the bottom, and the water itself will become clear. When the Buddha talks about developing insight, he says one, it has to be developed together with tranquility. The process of tranquility is stilling the mind. Insight comes from investigation, analyzing. In other words, the kinds of questions you ask, the way you probe into that stillness once it develops. It's not a particular technique because each of us has different places where we're caught up. So their general teaching, okay, probe here, ask these questions. But there's no one particular technique for how you do that. That involves a certain amount of ingenuity. If it weren't for that, insight would just be a mechanical process. But once the mind is still, okay, you start asking questions. And there's no guarantee that the question you ask tonight will give you awakening. But if you keep up the process, asking questions, okay, where is where is the stress here right now? What's, what goes along with the stress? What appears together with the stress? What disappears when the stress disappears? That one question will take you a long way. Because you'll find that even in states of very stable concentration, once you attain them, what looked to be totally stress-free, totally relaxed, totally spacious, still has a certain amount of burdensomeness to it. But still, someplace it's a burden on the mind. So once you allow that state to develop, then you start looking, okay, where is the stress here? And once you see it, and once you see what goes along with the stress, then you drop, drop whatever it is that goes along with the stress and see what happens. This takes you through many layers of the mind. The trick is knowing where to look. But again, it's all right here. It's just like gravity. Gravity has been here all along, but it wasn't until Isaac Newton figured it out by asking the right questions. It wasn't that gravity doesn't, didn't exist up until that time. It was off someplace else. It was all around him. Right there in the present moment. But it was learning how to ask the right questions. That's what made the difference. That's how the understanding came. Now people learn how to make use of gravity in ways that they would never have been able to before. And it's the same with the insights of the mind. All the stuff you have to get insight into, they're right here. It's just a problem of asking the right question, looking in the right way. And then these things that we have right here, some of which are blatant, some of which are not so blatant, become a lot more useful. 
serve a much better purpose than they ever did before. So when you find your mind wandering off in terms of theory and and history and all this other stuff, keep reminding yourself, okay, is the work, is the real work done here yet? Because this is where all the, the difference is going to be made. It's easy to talk about the theory, to compare them, and there's some use in that. But the prime issue is, okay, what are you doing right here, right now? How much do you really know right here, right now? How can you make use of that knowledge? Those are the questions that will get you someplace. <laughs>